K-I-L-R Taylor Games Hello gamers, simmers, and pilots. I am the Killer Gamer and welcome to the tour around the world featuring Microsoft Flight Simulator 3. Number 3. And this is most likely the flight and the episode that you're probably looking forward to because we start using the first uh, Sublogict scenery disc on this tour, which is going to be scenery disc number nine. And we're going to go ahead and get that loaded up. Right now, it's not loaded up. This is default. We're at Champaign, Illinois. And I'm going to go ahead and pull up our map here. Just so you can get an idea of where we're at. Do you see that? Just go ahead and zoom in here. So you can see Champagne. Okay, and so that's where we're located. Keep in mind that blue building, we talked about that in the last episode. There's a blue building right there. Which, unfortunately, is not there on the Sublogic uh, East collection, which is for Flight Simulator 4. It's not there. That's kind of weird. Um... <laughs> I was kind of expecting that to be there, considering that Sublogic did, the, did these scenery discs, but you know, there's my surprise. So this is where we're at as far as uh, the default scenery. Now we're going to go ahead and load up scenery disc number 9. Uh, we just go here to the nav uh, com. We go over here to scenery load. Now, one thing that I've noticed is you can only have a little bit of the scenery discs in here. You can't put like a whole bunch. Uh, so you're going to have to take out uh, some of the files, and maybe just put them in a separate folder because uh, there is not a function to be able to uh, go to another screen. At least I haven't seen it. So it's like, this is what you got. If you've got too many in here, you may not see what you want. So just put a few in your main directory. And then you can go over here and select the one that you want. And we want scenery disc number nine. So we'll go ahead and uh, click on seven. And it goes and tells us, okay, this is Chicago, St. Louis, Cincinnati. Press any key to continue. And then it freezes on you. Alrighty, well, that was a little entertaining. Um, <laughs> well, the disc does work, uh, or the image. The thing is that there's something bugged right here in Champagne. I don't know what it is, but I think I had the same problem on Flight Simulator 4, if I remember correctly. There's something about this area that when you try to use a scenery disc, it fails. It just crashes. Um, I tried it at Bloomington. It worked. Uh, and other places in Illinois worked just fine. But from Bloomington, I went ahead and tuned in Champagne and just slew over to Champagne just to see if something would happen. And sure enough, it froze as soon as it got there. So there's something wrong um, with this area. So if you're playing Flight Simulator 3, and I think 4 did it as well, um, take a look at my Flight Simulator 4 video and see, because I know I've gone through this before. It had to be that one. Wouldn't surprise me. 3 and 4 are pr almost the same. 
it's like Windows Vista and Windows 7. One is just a better improved version of the other. Uh, so yeah, if you're flying three or four and you've got scenery disc number nine and you're here and it's freezing on you or you're flying in this area and it freezes on you just know this area is bugged uh load up the default and as soon as you get out of this area then you can load up the scenery disc and you should be fine and that's what we're going to do on this one so uh we're here at champagne uh and the direction that we're going to be heading is towards blooming field I almost thought Bloomingdale's Bloomingfield, uh, but we're going to be going past that. So let's go ahead and talk about that in a little bit more detail. Okay, so we're looking at the map for scenery disk number nine. This is specifically for the Commodore 64, uh, but everything should still be the same uh, for the PC except maybe St. Louis. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, these are supposedly converted from the uh, Flight Simulator 2 scenery discs. However, um, I was playing around with the scenery disc in Flight Simulator 2, and uh, to my discovery, St. Louis uh, just kind of disappeared off the face of the map as soon as I got to it. Uh, maybe it's kind of like champagne as soon as you get to it well instead of disappearing it just freezes you <laughs> so we're here champagne illinois urbana your university of illinois willard that's where we're at this is bloomington we're going in this direction but we're going over here to greater peoria where we'll be seeing the illinois river uh, going into the uh, Peoria Lake Peoria uh, we're not going to be able to see ah, I'm just kind of going all over the place here yeah so we're, we're not going to see all this here uh, which is interesting though because if you wanted to do some uh, VFR flying you could uh, take this river and go all the way down to Kankakee. That would be an interesting flight, you know that? To do a uh, VFR flight following following this. I should do that. I think that would be kind of neat. Anyway, that's not what we're doing. <laughs> we're going from Champaign to Peoria. It's the same flight that we've been doing on the other simulators. And so we're going to match that. So that way uh, you can uh, compare those, compare the same exact flight with the other simulators and just see how things uh, developed over the years. And in case you're wondering, you probably saw this right here. These are just notes that were written on here, not by me. This is a scanned copy that I found online. So scenery does number nine, number 11. I'm guessing that whoever wrote this had that, uh, along with San Francisco, Hawaii, and Japan. They didn't mention one through six. So I'm kind of wondering if this is like the Commodore Amiga version or something, because it didn't have scenery discs one through six. But the person mentions the Oh no, um yeah, never, uh, hold on, I'll get to that. <laughs> person mentions this is the rest that I'm searching for. Numbers eight and ten and twelve. 12 was released for the PC. It was not released for the Commodore 64. It's also out for the Commodore Amiga. 8 and 10 were never released. No matter what platform, they were never released. Uh, in regards to maybe any Wikipedia sites that you see where it talks about, oh yeah, the whole USA is covered from using scenery this one through 12 no don't believe it eight and ten were never made um i had all the scenery discs for the commodore 64 i could never even at that time could never find eight and ten you look on the internet today you'll never find it if you found it <laughs> i want to see some screenshots of it because no matter where i've looked they don't exist 
Heck, you can even find the labels for all the scenery discs, except for these two, 8 and 10. But, you know, there are people just, oh, it's got to be out there somewhere. No, it's not out there. It was never made. Um, and they were, you know, it's not like they were making these in order either. Uh, they were, uh, like, they did seven, nine, um, I think seven and 11 came out relatively around the same time. And then they did nine, uh, and 12, they weren't doing them in order, but eight and 10 were like the last ones that they were going to do. Uh, and there was no need to do it, uh, I guess, because uh, they were getting up to the point of Flight Simulator 4. Uh, at the time, Sublogic was putting out their airline transport pilot. And then they released the Sublogic East and West, which actually did give full coverage across the USA. It only works with ATP. Airline Transport Pilot, and Flight Simulator 4. It won't work on 3. It's not going to work on 2. It was designed for ATP, and it just happens to be compatible with Flight Simulator 4. Uh, I tried it on Flight Simulator 3. It won't work. <laughs> and, and I thought maybe it was just a compilation of like 1 through 6 on the west and 7 through 12 on the east. Nope, it's not a compilation. It's a completely whole new package um, uh, with mountains and everything. And the maps don't even look like this. They're huge. They're they're like posters. All right. So like, here's a map right here. Okay, I'll just it's a little bright, but see. So here's a map, and it opens up uh, like like. <laughs> Like this, and then it folds open uh, downwards, like you know, two more times. It's a huge, huge map. Uh, and then, kind of show this to you here, a little bit zoomed in. But here are the sections. Okay, so the west. That's the west covered, and you can see how the east kind of covers it, overlaps it a little bit. But that just means the discs as part as the package. It's not saying, well, this is scenery disc number two and number five. No, it's just like it, one's uh, west disc two and west disc one. Or basically, they're not even discs. Well, I mean, they're discs in there, but they're just talk. Those are the maps, like section west two and section west one and section west four, because you install these to the hard disk is what you do. So yeah, it's it's a little bit different. Um, they're not easy to find, but if you can get yourself a copy of the Sublogic USA East and USA West, uh, I, I can't recommend it enough. Uh, they're good uh, for the most part um, with Flight Simulator 4 and... Uh, the aircraft scenery designer uh you can go in there and add some more buildings to the airports and really jazz it up a a, a bit and uh um, of course you'll be able to go in there along with the scenery and add uh dynamic scenery with planes coming in and taking off and stuff uh if you want an idea of the things that you can do take a look at my Flight Simulator 4 Adventures, uh, the Sublogic USA Tour. Um, as you would expect, it's using the Sublogic USA East and West with Flight Simulator 4. But I go in there and I use that scenery and I add buildings, I add uh, air traffic. Um, the adventures part, it's just not a word I threw in there. That's actually making use of the adventures that you can um, create uh, through, I don't know, it's like a basic programming language of some sort. And with that, you can have it do commands of play this voice file, play this voice file, do this. 
and this is where you can get the transponder to actually do something um throw in air traffic uh control and voices and chatter and just a whole bunch of stuff i mean it is just amazing what you can do with flight simulator 4 it really is um, for such an old simulator and the very first simulator which had uh which was open to third-party development and user created content absolutely amazing and it's just it's just really and it's just really fun to do stuff with and take some time but it's very enjoyable so check out those uh check out those videos that i made there's cinematics there's no talking or anything in there except for the atc and uh throughout i'll do like little music segments uh in there that show exterior views of the airplane um some flybys and uh it's music that i composed uh using a program called magic's music maker uh which is over here kind of behind stuff <laughs> literally behind stuff that's oh, big box so yeah so i use this right here magic's music maker 3.0 uh, there is a newer version. I mean, they've been creating this thing for the longest time. Uh, but yeah, there's a 2019 and a 2020 version. I'm using the old version uh, for the Flight Simulator 4 videos because it has more of a retro sound to it. Uh, and that's why I'm using the old version. The cinematics that I'm doing for fsx and prepared and x-plane i'm actually using the newer versions of magic's music maker and the loops and everything so and it really sounds good i've got over a hundred pieces of music that i've composed and put together so <laughs> not everything has shown up on the channel just yet but that was a lot of babbling um and a bit of a history lesson in regards to the scenery desks so getting away from that, this is where we're going. We're going to Greater Peoria. And now that we got that out of the way, and we've been talking for quite a bit here, the time's been continuing, uh, we're going to be hitting uh, dawn and daytime here uh, pretty shortly. Let's go ahead and tune in. We're not going to be able to tune in Peoria just yet, so we will tune in Bloomington instead. And we'll get ourselves pointed in that direction. Okay. All right there. 310. Let's get ourselves started. And I'm going to turn around and take off from runway 32. Because we're going to take a, a look over at Champagne. There's some scenery over here from the university. We looked at it on Flight Simulator 2. But hey, you may not be interested in looking at Flight Simulator 2. So we're going to do it here. Moving right along here. Well, maybe we won't be taking off at 32. Maybe we'll t be taking off on runway 4. Because <laughs> look at the back course. It's 4-4. Four, four. Nah, we'll just take off from 4. I don't think it matters too much of which runway we take, actually. Heck, we can just kind of, you know, 
take off from the taxiway if we want. Okay, I see a taxiway continuing off to the left. Let's go ahead and bring up our map display. That way we can take a, a better look at what's going on here. Okay. Yeah. That should work. Well, we got like three runways here. Maybe there were just two, but... You know what? I think that other one is runway 32. Okay. So we'll head over to the left and then the right. And we will get to a runway. <laughs> Also, too, we looked at that building, that blue building right over there in the last episode. That is the Avastar building. Uh, it's there also in Flight Simulator 2. It just doesn't have any writing on it. And as you would figure, it's in Flight Simulator 4 as well. It's there on the Commodore 64. It's got writing on on it uh, for the Commodore Amiga, just like Flight Simulators 3 and 4. But I don't think it's there after that. And we did flights with uh, Flight Simulator 5 and on, but I don't think that building is there. And interesting enough, USA East, which was done by Sublogic, just like the scenery was, you know, these scenery discs, it's not even there. I was a little surprised by that. I, I kind of thought it was going to be there, but it wasn't. Moving right along here. Take a look behind us. You can actually zoom in there. See? Avastar Air Center. So we don't have to taxi by it. Now, I've advanced the time a few hours, which is kind of pretending that we took, uh, you know, we slept for about three hours or so. Um, just trying to get it to match up with what we've done on the other simulators where we'll be flying and Dawn approaches. Um, in this case, Dawn is going to be uh, coming up a lot quicker. <laughs> because we were spending time talking about uh, the sublogic map. But that's okay. Here we go. 
I don't think this runway is labeled. I guess this is runway 36 or something. Magnetic compass is still moving. 35, 32. Is it done? done. Hmm. Not sure. Because we landed on runway 32, so I can't imagine there being a 32 and a 35, but... Oh well. Let's go ahead and take off. Oh, I forgot to set the autopilot. Uh, we'll do that when we're in the air. <laughs> Yeah, we can do that when we load up the uh, scenery disc number 9. And we are airborne. don't want to get too high in altitude. I want to give you guys a chance to check out Champagne. So I've got the landing gear down at the moment. Just so that way I can kind of level this off at a low altitude. I know that seems weird, but when I raise the landing gear, it, it, like, it starts wanting to fly upwards even more, and so um, just trying to create a little bit of a drag. Take a look behind us. Now, one of these is a dome. I think it's the Chase Dome, I think. I mentioned it in Flight Simulator 2 uh, that airport, which is right there, that is Frasca Field. This has got a little bit more color to it than what the Commodore 64 did. Or, but then again, I wasn't flying as low. It looks like a flying saucer, actually. <laughs> Doesn't it? Looks like a little flying saucer. It's got a little yellow underneath there, like it's engines or something. See that go by there. We got a few uh, looks like black buildings showing up. And there's a couple of parks as well. I forgot the names of them, but there's one and there was like another one off to the side over here. So we got a few buildings going on. There's a building there. Gonna take a look behind us. And what I think is funny is the uh, these are the freeways kind of connecting together. You got the diamond shape 
uh, exits and entrances. So I thought that was kind of uh, kind of cute that they threw that in there. Okay, we can go ahead and raise our landing gear now. And the road in front of us should take us to Peoria. Well, it'll, yeah, it'll take us to Bloomington and then Peoria. I think that's the right road. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, yeah, that road there goes to South Illinois. That one there's where it looks like it's going up into the sky. <laughs> Now the horizon line's right about here. It's just the dots don't extend out that far. Goodbye to Champagne and the airport and the freeways. <laughs> the scenery is just very, very close to what was done for Flight Simulator 2. I would say 1 as well. You got Flight Simulator 1, which I... Th it had the five major airports. Um, Megs and uh, O'Hare. Midway, Kankakee, and Champaign. And they had the taxiways, and they have fuel. That was it. That's that's all you have for Flight Simulator 1. And then Flight Simulator 2, they added more airports. And then Flight Simulator 3, right here. It's, it's like it's pretty much the same scenery. Just a little bit more things added here and there. And the sun is coming up. Another thing about Flight Simulator 4 is the sound and graphics. Uh, is it sound graphics and adventure? I think that's what it is. SGA. No, AAF is Aircraft Adventure Factory. That's what that is. But uh, I think, no, it's sound graphics aircraft. That's right, because they added. Um, like a few more aircraft on that one. But anyway, uh, using that with Flight Simulator 4 gives you sound, sound effects. You don't have to listen to this sound anymore. Now you've got an engine sound. And ironically, that engine sound is the same one that's used in the Sublogic Flight Simulator 2 for the Amiga and the Atari ST. So it's that same sound. 
but unlike the Amiga version, which only has that, uh, it's got sound effects for the landing gear and the flaps uh, and some other stuff. And the the touchdown with the landing gear it sounds a lot better because the one on the Amiga sounds like you're landing with a uh, 747, which is kind of weird when you're, you know, flying a Cessna and you hear this, roar, this screech. Roar. I can't even do it right, but you get the idea, I think. We can see what looks like some water out here. That is on the map a little bit there in between Champaign and Bloomington. Give it about nine more miles. Maybe a little further than nine miles. I'm trying to remember where this actually froze on me. It was like right around this area. <laughs> I intend to save the flight before changing the scenery disc. Because if it doesn't work, I want to be sure we can pick up where we left off. Well, we achieved. I didn't have to use our autopilot. We're at level flight right now, so that works for me. All right, let's go ahead and get into get back into our Flight Simulator 3 user's manual. Screen color schemes and patterns. Flight Simulator makes the best use of the graphics display device that it can. Three-dimensional views, the instrument panel, and map views are presented in, in color on display devices that can handle it. Dithering, creating shades of gray and distinctive textures using repetitive patterns, is used on monochrome displays. Many menus and inf information displays need more resolution, than low-resolution res color display modes allow. On display devices that have high-resolution color modes, all menus appear in full color. On devices without high-resolution color, the display changes to black and white high-resolution display mode for some menus. Loss of color is normal on 3D windows and the instrument panel while these menus are active. We're not going to worry about all that. We're going to run this in uh, EGA. Actually, on DOSBox, I have the SVGA graph graphics adapter uh, activated. So, But as you can see, it works just fine. The menu bar and menu system. The menu bar at the top of the screen pre presents the options you are you use to control the simulation. So, and you can see that here. So, mode, select among demo and flight modes, select aircraft type, save and recall situations or game, record and playback instant replays, and demos. Two, views, select among cockpit, tower, track, and spot modes, set up windows and window characteristics. Three, enviro, alter environmental factors such as seasons, time, clouds, and winds. This uh, really gets enhanced on Flight Simulator 4 because uh, you can add in uh, random weather. Uh, also, Flight Simulator 4 has clouds up in the sky. Actual, they look like, you know, little disks out in the sky, but you know, kind of like Minecraft clouds or something. 
but they're clouds. It, it puts something up in the uh, the sky. Whereas on here with Flight Simulator 3, it's not until you get real close in altitude that you see clouds, and those clouds are like bubbles. <laughs> they're they're circular bubbles. <laughs> Um, Fly Simulator 4 has it also, but they have it to where you can see uh, clouds up in the sky, so that's a nice uh, touch. Sim, uh, right here, adjust simulation factors internal to the aircraft and simulation system, including reliability, sound, pause, and auto coordination. Set up and calibrate interfaces to external controllers, such as your mouse and joystick. Activate auxiliary systems, including smoke system and control position indicator window. And then your nav slash com. Adjust navigational factors, including map display, autopilot, and your location in the world. Set up communication functions, including air traffic control communication. How can you... You can't even activate it. It talks about it here. But you can't even activate it. You can set it up, but then uh, what? There's no command to contact them. There is in Flight Simulator 4. It's, it's like an unfinished feature. Just like the transponder. It says to be implemented at a future date. <laughs> at a later date. Uh, each option has a number before it used to select the options. So yeah, so these these are keyboard show show cuts. One, two, three, four, five, and then when you select options with the mouse, it'll pull the menu down. Uh, same thing with the keyboard shortcuts, um, and then after that, you can just select the number of the line, or you can use your mouse and point out the option. So the next part is just kind of talking about some, well, if, it's, if it looks like this, then like if it's got a colon or if it's got a number or if it's got three dots, so ah, that's not really all that important. But we'll do one last thing here about the three-dimensional window. A three-dimensional window usually occupies, usually occupies the top half of the display screen. It can be the view out your windshield, or from a spotter plane, or from the control tower, depending on what you select. The title bar above the three-dimensional window shows your view mode. Well, I don't see that, but then again, I think I have that turned off so that we don't see that. Um, through this window, you can see the runway terrain and horizon. The visual effects of the flight simulator program are realistic. Yes, they sure are. Solidly shaded surfaces give the feeling of depth and substance. Cloudy days bring dark skies until you break out of the clouds and reach clear sky. As you fly through the clouds, visibility is obscured <laughs> by bubbles. At night, lights on the ground are your only ref visual reference. And that is our, mi uh, that's our manual. So... Let's go ahead and do a little bit of magic and get scenery disc number nine activated. Kapow! Everything's working the way it should. Scenery disc number nine is on. Uh, we're far away enough from Champagne that things didn't freeze. And as you can see, we're, we've got a little bit more extension, just slightly a little bit more detail. Um, there is no need for this road going this direction because, well, there is no scenery that way. But now there is. So good. Everything is working the way that we want it to. And now we can go ahead and tune in to Peoria, which is 115.2. So let's go ahead and tune in 115.2. And boom, as you can see, 53 miles to go. Just in case you had any doubts that I had scenery this number 9 loaded. <laughs> and I have a, a graphical image of scenery this 9 below. Uh, if you take a look below of the 
Flight Simulator 3 box, you can see Sublogic Scenery Disc Number 9. see Bloomington up ahead. There's the Bloomington Airport. Uh, let's go ahead and change our VOR here. Okay, so that's a rough estimate of the direction that we need to head. Basically, if we just follow this uh, this interstate, it's going to take us to Peoria. Exciting stuff, isn't it? I don't think there is anyone else on YouTube that is doing old flight simulation videos with the scenery discs. Uh, from what I see, they're not really doing full flights at all. Uh, not like what I'm doing here. And, well, you know, there's not a whole lot of demand for these old simulators. Um, But I know there are people out there that en enjoy this. You know, there it's good, uh, good memories. Uh, there are, you know, old simulation fanatics like myself uh, that really enjoyed flying this back in the day. For me, it was the Amiga. I didn't have flight simulators three and four. Um, I didn't jump into the Microsoft uh, persuasion <laughs> until five. 5.1 to be more specific. Because by the time 5.1 came out, I'm just like, oh wow, look at that. That looks cool. There is another YouTuber out there, and I subscribe to his channel. His name is Com, uh, C O A M, Coem, and he's got some uh, old retro uh, flight simulation videos. I th think for the most part he does Flight Simulator '98, and I think five also. Um. I don't know if he does really anything else. We'll take a look at his channel here um, in a moment. Some free advertisement there, Comb. got some other stuff on his channel too. He's doing full flights also. Um, he's not really doing a tour from one airport to the other, but he does um, kind of standalone flights like like one airport in Japan to another airport or uh, major air, you know, airports here and there. So he does that. the Bloomington Airport over there. And his are cinematics. I mean, he doesn't sit there and talk and chat and blabber away like what I'm doing. <laughs> You've got the whole flight. Um, you can tune it in and just have it going in the background and just kind of enjoy it. 
so he and I are taking a different approach on stuff. Um, I like to keep you company while we're um, flying because this is going to be a very, very long tour. Even longer for flight simulators 4 and beyond uh, because we can do worldwide coverage with them. 4 is going to be tricky uh, because the whole world isn't quite mapped out. But you can kind of fudge it a little bit. But with flight simulators 2, 3, and 4, sorry, 2 and 3, uh, you're limited to the sublogic scenery disk. So you're limited to most of the USA, Japan, Hawaii, Western Europe. Moving right along here. Got 40 miles to go. We can take that and fly south into more coverage for scenery dust number nine. I actually think uh, St. Louis is down that way. Maybe. <laughs> it's in that direction. Is it actually going to show up on this? I don't know. It didn't on Flight Simulator 2. That's either some type of bug with Flight Simulator 2, or it's just not on the scenery disk. And if those scenery disks are converted to work with Flight Simulator 3, then I would think that it would still not be there. Uh, could be part of just bugginess, just using it on DOSBox. For all I know. Yeah, there's our airport. Not our airport, that's Bloomington. What is that? It's like an individual little white dot out here. It's an airplane! <laughs> Not on this version. We don't have air traffic on this one. Okay, 39 miles. I'm going to go ahead and pull up Combs uh, site here. And like I said, I think I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Ooh. Looks like there's some new new footage on uh, Flight Simulator 2020. Okay, I'm going to pull this up here so you can see. So here he is. Coom. And he's got some planes there. This, uh, the graphics, this looks a lot like Flight Simulator. This looks like Flight Simulator 95 is what this looks like. Because some of the textures were like from 5. And some of this was for like from you know, like what you see in 98. So that's what this looks like here. Uh, but you can see he's got... Yeah, see he's got Flight Simulator for Windows 95 right here. Queenstown to Auckland. And uh, Hila International to, to Kuhula, Kuhuli uh, Airport. He does a little bit of role play here. So he's got uh, Boeing 737, just a general one here. This one, he's got Hawaiian Airlines. Uh, here he's doing Palo Alto to Sonoma County. 
Here's Flight Simulator 98. Um, another Japan uh, flight. This is a Japan. Uh, he like he likes uh, his airlines. You can see that there. This is Christchurch to Inver Kigil, something like that. But you can see he's got some Flight Simulator 98 videos. Let's go over here to uh, videos in general. Uh, here's new Chittos to Tokyo. I uh, see now he's got a Flight Simulator 10 video here. I need to check this one out. I need to um, uh, see that because I've he's got uh, here's another one here. And he's got some more flight simulator to 98. He does have flight simulator 2002. Christchurch to Wellington. Didn't we see that on another one? Or maybe I was just thinking it was. He's done some adventures. So here's flight simulator 2000. This is an adventure. The Harry Carrier. <laughs> oh, here we go. Yeah, Christchurch to Green uh, Queenstown. Flight simulator 98. That's what we saw. And, oh, this one's Christchurch to Wellington. Okay. And he's got using Air New Zealand. There's uh, Flight Simulator 10. Here's some more. Flight Simulator 98, 98. Now, he's got a video on ATP, uh, air, Airline uh, Transport Pilot. Um, I still haven't gotten any videos uh, of that up, but I will. He's got other stuff um, flight related. Oh, he's got some PlayStation stuff on here too. Japan Airlines there. So yeah, that's his that's his channel. So go check him out. Go subscribe to him. See? See? Subscribed! Like I said, I, I'm subscribed to him. Now I'm going to see if I can find out what that whole... What's going on with uh, Flight Simulator 2020. Uh, let's see. Where is that? There it is. FlightSimulator.com Well, I'm not seeing anything new. No, it's not FAQ. Ah, here we go. Here we go. Let's pull this back up here. So, Microsoft Flight Simulator, they're just calling it Flight Simulator now. Uh, early October, expect an update for a Tech Alpha recruiting. I am hoping uh, that I'll be able to get a part of that. Uh, and here's some insider stuff. I mean, check out the screenshots. This is just amazing. Uh, let's see. This is a video. Let's take a look at it. <laughs> is it going to work? This is like having trouble. Holy macro! Whoa! What is that? <laughs> World preview. Well, I hope the game doesn't do this. What do we need to do? Let it load up or something? Take a look at that. Sun's coming up.
<laughs> Just as you're getting into it, it's like... Wait! Goodness, this is like annoying. This here, this reminds me of uh, some of the stuff I've seen on Me Mega Scenery Earth. Come on, man, load up. We'd be done with this video by now. Whoa, that's kind of cool. The uh, circular. I where that's at. And I think everything is like accurately placed as far as uh, 3D building. Look at all the 3D buildings in here. Coming October 10, 2019. Well, I don't think Flight Simulator is coming out on October. Maybe it is. <laughs> Maybe it is coming out in October. I don't know. The preview for Episode 1 World of our Feature Discovery Series is here. Oh, okay. So this is, this is just a preview. Okay, well, that'll be interesting. And speaking of interesting, we're about ready to hit daytime, and Peoria is in front of us, folks. This is it right here. We can see Peoria Lake right... I can't even see my mouse. So Peoria is right here. Peoria Lake is over here on this side. And we should see the Illinois River kind of stretching out in this direction. We've got about 20 seconds to daylight. Bloomington's back there. Five, four, three, two, one, boom. And it's now daytime. We can turn our lights off. See, and this is another thing that I do that uh, Coam doesn't do. He's not going to sit there and play videos and stuff in the middle of his flights. <laughs> no, just just me. But I try to make the flights entertaining because, well, you know, there's not a whole lot of, lot to see out here. Um, so I, I try to be a little bit more interactive in these flights so that way... Um, you know, it's as if we're just kind of flying together and we're just kind of chit-chatting type of thing. But if you're into cinematics, um, I have been uh, working on those. Flight Simulator 4 is the earliest uh, in the flight simulators that I did a c cinematics on. I don't think Flight Simulator 2 would be very interesting. <laughs> Maybe it will. Um... I haven't had anyone say there's a demand for it. Uh, I don't have anything for 5 or 98. I don't really care about 2000. But uh, Flight Simulator 5 and 98, I am considering doing some uh, cinematics on just to cover some scenery disc areas with those. And I don't know if I'll... No, there... Yeah, I do have something with Flight Simulator 2004 that I could utilize uh, for some cinematics on that. There it is, stretching out there in the distance. D 
the airport is going to be before the Vore. Not too much further, but I'd say we're probably 15 miles away from the airport. This one's got fuel, and it's got ATIS, 126.1. So let's go ahead and find out what they have to say. Maybe nothing. <laughs> 126.1. Should be close enough. I think they have ATIS. Yep, that's it. It's all right. 126.1. Well, maybe it doesn't work. Let's go ahead and start. Okay, so that looks like the airport right over there. I'd say we're probably about 10 miles away from it. So let's go ahead and we'll lower our landing gear. We'll get ourselves one degree of flaps. Now before, on the other simulators, we were kind of flying around over the Illinois River and landing on, uh, it's like runway four, I think. We're not gonna do that this time. I'm gonna take this runway going this direction. We're gonna do a little something different on this one. Since the comm radio doesn't seem to be working, try it again here. There it goes. Greater Peoria. Information Charlie Zoo, weather, visibility, temperature, land departing runway 4. Yeah, so that's what we had done. We had landed on 4. It's always runway 4. We need to start adding some weather. That'll get things to change a bit. And now that we got some daylight, uh, maybe we can go ahead and do that. Start adding some weather. You can do that at night too, but it's like, like I said, there's nothing really to see. But I think we can spice things up. Uh, for a few episodes after this. Just taking a look around. Enjoying the view. Someone send me a message here.
<laughs> yeah, got a picture of my cat. <laughs> and some cute things that he's doing. Drop down some more flaps here. Coming a little, little fast here. Okay, so we can see the runway there. And I'm trying to get lined up with it. Drop one more thing of flaps here. Yeah, it's like I'm aiming this direction here. It's almost as if I am moving forward in a sideways type of matter. That road that you're, um, well, road, interstate, whatever, that is going to Galesburg. Which we're not going to Galesburg, but we are going to be heading in that direction. So we will see Galesburg in the next episode. A little preview of things to come. too much as far as uh, our descent. Coming in nice and easy. See, there's fuel off to the right there. We'll top off our tanks. Runway 31.
do our flare. Let's try not to stall and crash the airplane here. Yay! Well, we did stall, but... We didn't crash, and that's a good thing. Flaps are up. Now the question is... Where is the taxiway? I think it's right over here. Stop! Yep, got a taxiway right there. So let's go ahead and clear the runway. Some realistic handling there as we <laughs> do this really sharp turn on a Cessna. Move in the direction of the yellow. That is the fuel box. And the soap box. <laughs> I like to call it a soap box because there's a, a, a white box next to that F. Whoa. Okay, that's the end of the pavement, it looks like. Off to the left there. There we go. on top of the field here. And our tanks are topped off. And we're just going to park right here. Because why not? Alright, so the f uh, the phone, <laughs> the plane is turned off. And we're here at Peoria. So welcome to Peoria, Illinois. And thank you. Uh, for watching this flight. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, leave a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. A like. And uh, subscribe. Be a part of the killer television community. That would be awesome. And then uh, if you ring that notification bell, you'll get notified when new videos are uploaded to the channel. I try to upload at least once a week, if possible, uh, sometimes several and I got different types of videos that go up on this channel of all the various different flight simulators plus I got some Minecraft stuff um, got some mi uh, music videos and uh, uh, you know music segments and stuff like that that feature the music that I've been composing and just some other things so uh, try to do try to stay busy <laughs> and try to just get some fun stuff on the channel but Thanks for joining me, and I will see you on the next leg of our journey.